All right, uh, let's have a look at electrical energy and power today. What is electrical energy? From the definition written on the board, is the product of the charge. Q is the charge, which is measured in coulombs. That has been mentioned in our previous uh, video. And the potential difference, which is letter V, that also has been mentioned or discussed in our previous video. So when we find the product of the two parameters, what we have is electrical energy. And don't forget, unit of energy is joules. Joules. So anything called energy, whatever type of energy it is, unit is joules. So from the definition of electrical energy, we can form an equation, which I name here as equation one. Electrical energy equals to the quantity of charge multiply, which is the product, by the potential difference, which is this V. Don't forget, potential difference is also referred to as voltage. As voltage. Now, from this equation one, we are going to develop many more equations. It is not, I don't, I don't uh, encourage my students to cram formula in physics, no. It's never done that way. But when you know the basis, you can just record it. And also, I have some approaches I use, which I'm going to share with you. For example, like this QV, which is for electrical energy, I will give it a name or a statement. For example, Q for Queen, V for, for Victoria. So, once I remember Queen Victoria, I have remembered electrical energy. Electrical energy is what? Queen Victoria. That is my own way. Anytime I want to recall a formula, I will give it a name or an acronym. Alright, from here, don't forget that in our previous video, you have to recall that Q is current times time. You have to remember this. Then from there, you substitute for Q using current times time in equation 1. So I'm going to replace Q with current times time. So another equation 2 has been formed. Electrical energy will be equal to current times time, which replace Q, then times V, which has been there before. That will be ITV or IBT or VIT. But I decide to call it TIB so that I can give it a name, TIV. TIV. So if you can remember the word TIV, though it's an acronym, it's not a word, but you can remember the acronym TIV. You have remembered what? Electrical energy. That means you use this formula when you have these three parameters. You use this formula when you have these two parameters. All right, let's develop another one from Ohm's law. In the previous video, we established the fact that V is equal to current times resistance from Ohm's law. So from V is equal to I half, I am being made the subject. That will be V over what? R. Now, I am now substituting V with I R in equation one. Don't forget equation one is Q V for Victoria. So that means this I R will replace this V. That is why we have Q times I times R. R I Q. I gave you this acronym. Rick. Rick. If you can remember Rick, then you have also remembered an electrical energy formula. Also, using that same IR, 
which is for V to replace V in equation 2. Don't forget, equation 2 is T. T. So that means instead of writing V, I will put IR. So now be T times I times IR, which is this. I times T times IR. That will give us I square RT, which is named as equation 4. That means we have been able to establish four equations for electrical energy so far using two bases. One from the definition of electrical energy, which is QV, and the other from Ohm's law. So, as you can see. Now, let's now see how we can relate this with electrical power. Before we relate it with electrical power, let's form another equation by using V over R to replace I. Let's use V over R to replace I. Where we have I, that is equation what? 2. So, when I use V over R to replace I in equation 2, that will give me electrical energy is equal to T multiplied by, instead of writing I, I will put V over R to replace it. V over R, then times the last V. That will give us what? V square T over R. Let's call that equation what? 5. These are the five basic formula for electrical energy. Please get familiar with them. Let's now relate all the five to electrical power. According to the definition of power, general definition of power is the rate of energy transfer per unit time or the rate of work done per unit time. You can use either energy or work done. So that means from the form, from the definition, power is equal to energy over time or work over time. Now, let's now turn this to electrical power. From equation one, which is for electrical energy, remember that electrical energy is Queen Victoria, QV. So definitely, electrical power will be QV over QV over what? Time. You just divide it by time. From the second one, remember electrical energy is I uh, is T. Let me use the acronym T. So definitely I will just divide it by time because energy over time. Time we cancel time. That means power is what? I V equation 2. So note this. Every formula of electrical energy that contains time in it can be turned to formula for electrical power by just removing the time. Because here, yeah, if time is removed from T, T I V, it becomes I V. So that's how we are going to generate others. Now, so these are the generated formula for electrical power. So we can now have a look at questions to solve in different forms. Let's have a look at this question as the first example. A work of 30 joules, so we are given work done, 30 joules, which is the same thing as energy. Don't forget that. Yes, it's done in transferring 5 millicoulombs of charge. That is Q. Don't forget Q is in coulombs. So that means 5 milli coulomb. Small m represents milli and milli means 1 over 1000. That means 5 times 1 over 1000 coulombs. So the product are going to use for our Q. Alright? What is the potential difference? We are asked to find PD which is V. Okay. So you have Q, you have you are looking for V and you have energy. What do you think of? 
the question one. And if energy is equal to Queen Victoria. So W I mean electric energy is equal to Q times V. So we want to make V the subject. I mean, yes, yeah, the subject. What's our V? That's 30. What's our Q? 5 times 1 over 1,000. Then times V. So when we cross multiply, 30 times 1,000 is equal to 5V. Divide both sides by 5. 5 year 1, 5 year 6. So, V will be equal to 6,000. That means 6,000 volts is the potential difference between the two points. Alright, this is another example. A current of 0.5 amps flows when connected to a 40 volt battery. How much energy is dissipated in two minutes? These are the parameters given. We have current, we have voltage, which is potential difference, and we have time. That means we think of electrical energy is equal to T. Can you remember that? T. But you have to be careful here. Time is given in minutes. And the standard unit of time is what? Seconds. So we multiply this one by 60 to change it to seconds. Do not forget that. So that means it will not be equal to time, which is 2 times 60. That has been converted to seconds. Then times current, which is 0 0.5 amps. Then multiply by voltage, which is 40. So when we do the mathematics, what do we get? We get 2,400 joules, which can be written as 2.4 kilo joules. Kilo means 1,000. So if you divide this one by 1,000, it gives you 2.4. Then kilo will re replace that 1,000. So whichever way you want to leave it. Let's have a look at another example. All right, this is another example. A steady current of 2 amps flows in a coil of EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force, which also means the same thing as potential difference. But the only difference from the other potential difference is that EMF is across an open circuit. Why potential difference mainly is for a closed circuit. But we are treating this EMF as potential difference, which is B. All right, so we are given two different EMFs here. One is 12 volts, and the other one, which is called back EMF. Back EMF. That means it's opposing the first one. This is from the knowledge of uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, okay? And Lenz's law. So, but for now, let's not talk about that. Our target is we want to find the energy stored in the loop, that is, in the loop of that coil. Since we have, so since we have our I voltage, because E1 and E2 will replace the V in the formula, we are using IVT, which is, which I gave acronym T. But the only thing now is since we have two V, that means this V will now be the net V, which is the difference between the two. So that will now be current, which is two, times V, which is 12 minus three. That's the difference between, that's the net voltage. Then times time, which is 0 0.4. So that will be two times eight, than 0.4. Sorry, I meant to say 2 times 9 because 12 minus 3 is 9, not 8. That was a slip of tongue. Okay? 2 times 9 times 0.4. That will give us 7.2 joules.
All right, this is example four. A lamp is marked 220 volts, 60 watts. Lest I forget, watt is the unit of power. So take note of that. That means we are given power to be 60 watts. And we are given potential difference to be 220 volts. Calculate the energy it will consume. This is a very straightforward question. See, you are given power. Power is equal to 60 watts. And you are given V2220 volts. And you have to find energy it will consume. Let's that W. You don't need to go through this V. Why? Because you remember your power is energy over what? Over time. Have it? All right. Now, and uh, we are given time here. Yes, sorry, time is one hour. But all you need to do is that you convert this hour to seconds. Okay. Now, since you are looking for energy, you don't need to go through it because power is directly energy over time. And you are looking for energy and you have the power, you have the time. So just cross multiply. So energy will be power times what? Time. And what is power? 60. Time, one hour is equal to how many minutes? 60 minutes. So this is 60 minutes. And then 60 minutes to seconds, that will be times another 60 because one minute equals to 60 seconds. So what is our answer? That will give us 216,000 joules. If you want to go through V, you can use V. But remember that you have to find resistance first before you can do that. Because power, I mean, uh, energy is equal to IVT. So, and you also have to find current. That will be taking you time. All right. This one can be converted to kilojoules. That is 216 kilojoules. This three zeros is replaced with K, which is 1,000. 1,000 times 216 will give you this part. Now, looking at this question, we are given an electrical circuit. And we have to find the total energy developed in five minutes. Whenever you are given circuit diagram like this, it's advisable you combine all the resistances to become one. Irrespective of the arrangement you are looking at, make sure you combine them to become one. And this knowledge is already in the previous video, in one of the part one to four of the electricity, current electricity I treated in my previous videos. So, first step, I am going to combine these two resistances to become one. Since they are in parallel, that means the total resistance will be 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So 1 over total resistance will be 1 over 40 plus 1 over 40. That will give us 2 over 40, which is 1 over what? 20. By the time you cross multiply, RT will be equal to 20 ohms. That means the total resistance here is 20 ohms. That is what, what we are now going to use with the current and this V to get the what? The energy. So we can use any of the formula. Since we have V and we have, uh, sorry, since we have uh, R and uh, amperes and time. So we are, not, we are going to use energy is equal to I square RT. We are not going to use uh, V in this case. If we use V in this case, that means we have to multiply the result by 2 again because there are two different you know, appliances combined together. That is why I said it is advisable you go through the system. Please, anytime you have circuit diagram like this. Don't use B to calculate energy or power. Use current. I mean, use current and the resistance. And make sure you combine all the resistances to become one, as I did here.
So this one will now give us 1.2 1.2 square times 20 times we have to convert 5 minutes to seconds. That will be 5 times 60. So that will give us 8,640 joules. All right. Okay, this is another example. We are given a system of electric circuit. And uh, we have three resistors. Four ohms, two ohms, three ohms. Connected in both parallel and series arrangement to a battery of 26 volts. So that means the whole of this arrangement is connected to this battery. We have to find the power dissipated in the system. Like I told you, Whenever you have two or more resistances, the best thing is to combine them together to form the resistance. That means I'm going to find the combined resistance. I'll find this one first, which is in parallel. When I get the answer for these two, I will add it to four. That will not give me the total resistance. This knowledge is already in the previous video, in, in the part one to part four of, electric, um, of current electricity I treated. Now, how do we find the total resistance there? As I said, is in my previous video. Let me name this one R1, R2, R3. I will deal with R2 and R3 first, being in parallel. The combination of these two parallel, R2 and R3, I name it R23. So 1 over R23 will give us this, 5 over 6. That's 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. But 1 over R23 is not the same thing as R23. So when you cross multiply and you make R23 the subject, you get 6 over 5. Or better still, turn this one upside down. You get this. Turn this one also upside down. You get this. Which is 1.2. Now, to now find the total, this 1.2 will be added to this 4 because they are now in series. 4 ohms and 1.2 and, uh, ohms are now in series. So that will give us 5.2 ohms. It is now this 5.2 ohms we used alongside with these 26 volts to find power. And if you like, you can use this 5.2 and this uh, 26 volts to get current, then use another formula for power that has to do with current. You get the same answer. But you have to be conscious of time. Therefore, I'm going to use power is equal to V square over R. And that will be, what is V? 26 square over R, which is 5.2. That will give us 130 watts. That's the power dissipated in the circuit. So, in my next video, I am going to treat uh, buying electricity that is what we use to calculate the energy consumed in our utility bill so take note of that